So here is the harvesting build that I've been using on Cook, which has served me pretty well so far and I think is really, really good. And I'd like to make this video so that maybe you'll try it and see how it works for you. One important thing to, me to mention about Cook, though, is that it's important that you communicate. If you don't communicate, he's not going to be as good of a character. He's not as... And, and really, family in general needs to communicate even more so than victims do. But most of his usefulness, especially early on, is going to require you to communicate with your team because his listening ability, only he can see uh, any victims that he has tracked with his listening ability. So that's important to communicate that to your team. At level three, with his ability, you will see that he you know, gets the opportunity to show his teammates uh, victims that he tracks, but it takes forever to level stuff up in this game. So that means you're going to have to play. A, if you don't communicate, you're going to have to play a ton of cook without communicating before you finally get to level three. And that's not going to be great. So I'm just warning you right now, you probably want to communicate if you're going to play cook. If you don't communicate, hey, I'm not going to tell you how to play, play who you want to play. But maybe a different uh, family member would be a better choice for you. Because this is definitely a support role. So, let's jump into his tree first. Uh, I feel very strongly that the only thing to pick here, regardless of build, is this one right here. Is to go up the right side and grab this. Uh, you really... So, if you look at the tier 3, level 3, of any family member's abilities, it adds something special. So, you know, I, I, I can't give you other examples, but it's, uh, you know, it changes something drastically about the perk rather than just giving you like a, a you know, a better cooldown or uh, increasing the range or whatever it is. It actually changes the way the ability functions. So if you look at this over on the left side of the tree, it says focusing in on a victim takes half as long. You don't really need that because it already uh, focuses pretty quickly. Uh, it's just, it's a skill thing. Like it, it, it can be kind of difficult to track somebody if they're moving. Uh, and this would certainly make it easier, but you just gotta, by the time you get to level three, you will be so good at being able to track people with the listening ability. You shouldn't need this. This is kind of a crutch ability. So I would never take this. Um, over here in the middle, successfully highlighted victims stay marked twice as long. You don't need that because, especially if your teammates can't see them, you're just going to mark them and call out to your team where they are right away. And them staying highlighted for longer doesn't mean anything to you because as Cook, your job is not to go get them. That's the only way it would be really helpful. Like, yeah, rarely if you spot someone who's right next to you, you're going to go get them. But most of the time, you're going to be spotting them fairly far away, and your job is going to be to patrol certain areas and defend uh, doors and stuff like that and also pick up blood bags and feed Grandpa. So them staying highlighted twice as long doesn't do anything for you. If there's a way you could combo this with this, then it would probably be okay. But this is the one you want to take, which is highlighted victims are marked for the entire family. It's very good even if you do communicate because then, uh, you know, your family members, your teammates can see exactly where they are, which is helpful, especially in situations where victims might be in areas that's difficult to describe. So, for instance, at the beginning of the match, if you don't have this, listening with Cook at all is completely useless because spotting anyone in the basement is not helpful information. Like, you're not going to be able to pinpoint exactly where someone is in the basement. You're not going to be able to describe that because you can't see down there. So all, all you're going to be able to do is say, hey, Leatherface, I just spotted someone in the basement. That, does, that doesn't do anything for your Leatherface player. It's useless information. But if you can spot them and now Leatherface can see exactly where they are, well, that's pretty helpful. Now, I will say, in general, you shouldn't really be using Cook's listening ability early on in the match when all the victims are still in the basement because that's usually your time to 
be placing your padlocks on doors and then also collecting blood to feed to grandpa. That's your job in the early game. And that's going to be your job for most of the match. Once you have your padlocks placed, then your job is basically collecting blood, you know, patrolling doors and objectives and collecting blood bags along the way. And then occasionally, you know, listening for victims when you can't find anybody and maybe all the blood bags are on cooldown. So you're going to want to come over here. Uh, you, you notice that you can actually go like middle right up if you want. Um, but I, you know, it, it's hard to say. I Increased range is not bad. You couldn't go wrong with either one of these. Like a, going from 33 to 60% increased ability recharge rate. I would actually say that... The range is probably better because I've never really reached a point with Cook where I felt like, oh man, I really need my ability, but I, I can't use it because I used it all. You're not you're not gonna use his ability that much. But I'd say that probably the uh range is better, and then at the end of this you can go over here to the right and pick this up. That's probably the best way to go about it. So that's what you're doing with his ability. Now, if we take a look at his uh, perks, the two that I think you absolutely must take are Blood Banker and Universal Donor. Blood Banker is, increases your blood storage, and Universal Donor increases the amount of blood you collect from buckets. That's your whole, that's the whole, uh, gimmick behind this build. So, these two are absolutely required. Your third perk is can vary depending on like what you want to do i've kind of gone back and forth on what i want to do like you could take blood harvesting so that you could save points having to put points in blood harvesting and maybe put some in savagery i don't think you should be putting any in in endurance because he's slow that's you know his gimmick is not to run people down you want to be slow get a ton of blood and very powerful when you do strike victims uh I was using this for a while, which is uh, stamina consumption being reduced when you're over 50% full. That one is really nice because, uh, you know, you're going to be over 50% full for the majority of the match with this build. The only issue is, is it's like 5%. Like, how good is that really? 15%. How good is that really? I don't, I don't know. I would have to get that to tier three to know for sure, but like I said, leveling in this game takes a lifetime. Uh, there is also this one here, uh, Violent, which is the one that I'm going to start experimenting with now, which is your damage is increased when you're carrying a full blood vial. Now, it's 20% damage increase. I don't know if it's like additive or multiplicative. We will have that, that there's going to be a lot of testing done to figure that out because if you go over here and you say, okay, well, Sledge, you just said that, you know, only having 15% is maybe not worth it. And this is only 5% more at level three with at 20%, but you got to have a full blood vial. Whereas this one, you only need 50%. So how is that worth it? If it's multiplicative, then this is really bad because his endurance is so low. So if it's like, you know, 10 endurance times 15%, that's not great. But because his savagery is so high, if it's 20%, you know, times his large amount of savagery, which in this case is 36, then that's actually pretty good. So it, this third perk slot can be experimented with, but in general, you want something to do with blood harvesting. So it's going to be one of these three perks. It's going to be either Violent, Siphon, or Blood Runner. Now, if you look at the actual skill tree, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go over to the right, and you're going to go up this way. Now, I thought maybe you could go to the left and find some of these, uh, you know, blood harvesting perks over here out of the random perk nodes, but you can't. Because when I've selected these random perk nodes, it's like it cycles through like the same four perks, and none of them are these blood harvesting perks. And the reason I wanted to go over here is because if I had it my way, I would take uh, I would take the two blood harvesting perks that I mentioned, this one, Universal Donor and Blood Banker, 
and combo it with this right here, security pins. It makes it harder to uh, lockpick Cook's padlocks because this perk is is sweet. But unfortunately, there is no, um, you know, blood harvesting stuff over here. Like, they have surgical, but you don't really need that because it's overkill. Like, one hit is going to practically fill you up as it is. You don't need to get more blood when you hit someone. So, yeah, you want to go to the right side, pick all this stuff up. You're going to fill out this whole tree. You're going to come over here. When you get to this crossroads branch path, you're going to go to the right. You get to this one, you're going to go to the right. And then when you get all the way to the very top, you're going to go to the left. And you're going to get, so you can get Universal Donor. Uh, and you're just picking up all these perks. And I actually have one leftover uh, attribute point that I could still get. But it's really not even necessary because, you know, one point's not going to make a huge difference. If you want to save that point for somebody else. Uh, so then you're using these three. And then, uh, based on the grandpa abilities that you're going to have, don't think it's worth it to take either one of these which is 50% more damage when a victim jumps down a well and 50% more damage in jumping out a window. That happens so rarely, it's really just not worth it. So it's going to be between these two, which is stamina drain while sprinting is decreased by 20%, and grandpa's sonar, sonar ability is reduced by 20% at each level. I like excited grandpa, reducing the uh, delay between sonar abilities. Because ideally, you're going to get this dude up to his maximum level quickly and it's going to expose everybody no matter what they're doing and him being able to do that more frequently is going to get is going to get the victims killed faster uh stamina drain is is okay especially if you unlock that right away because then it's like you know less stamina drain means you can run around more and collect more blood so either one of these would be fine but i personally prefer Excited Grandpa. And then for the attributes, obviously, you're maxing out his blood harvesting. And then you're going to have one little leftover point here, which I suggest putting into Savagery because I don't think one point into his measly 10 endurance is going to make a difference. Is the one point in Savagery going to make a difference? Um, maybe not, but if other players bring the Grandpa perk that increases melee damage, maybe that one different one point in savagery is the difference between you know four hits and five hits to get an execution so that's why i put that perk there for that point there so there you go that is the cook harvesting build give it a try let me know what you think i've been having a lot of fun with it and it's been very effective uh and basically as far as how you want to play him like i mentioned um you want to make sure that early game you are padlocking stuff, get those padlocks on quick, and then collect blood as much as you can. Use your metal, middle mouse button ability to see where blood bags are in case you don't know where they spawn. Pick those up, try to max out your uh, blood vial as quickly as you can, and then feed grandpa. And then from there, you're just going to patrol whatever the central area is of the map. And generally, I would say with Cook, you want to patrol the objectives that are more difficult to track. So what I like to do is say on Family House, I'm going to stay inside the house for the majority of the match, and I'm only going outside if I absolutely need to. And I am protecting the fuse box. I'm going in there and protecting the fuse box. I'm watching the exits. I'm cycling around the house, collecting blood. And then also I'm going to check in on um, like the valve, the water valve escape. That's the other thing I'm going to check on. So that's what I'm doing on Family House. Uh, with the gas station, same thing. I'm going to padlock three out of those four gates in the central area. And then I'm doing circles around there, collecting blood, watching those gates. And then for Slaughterhouse, that one's a little more difficult because it's quite a bit more spread out. But same same thing, I'm kind of staying in that central area and I'm guarding the fuse box and the water valve escape and making sure that nobody picks up a water valve and winds up getting downstairs. That's kind of your goal. And you're also going around and you're going to kick um, barricades. Communicate with your leather face, though. Because you want to make sure that if the Leatherface is really good, 
you can communicate with them and be like, hey, come over here and permanently destroy this. Rather than me shutting it and now you can't destroy it and someone could come along and open it up and use it to escape and get away from you. Maybe it's better for Leatherface to come destroy it, but early game you just want to close all those things because when people come up through the basement, they're going to be looking to go for those, those uh, crawl spaces. So shut those down as quickly as you can. So there you go. There's Cook. There's my blood harvesting build. Give it a try. See what you think. See if you like it. I've had a lot of fun with it. Been real effective for me. If you like the video, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one.